The president last week set off a political hand grenade with his plan to cancel up to $10,000 in student debt for many borrowers. And for those who had Pell Grants, goes up to 20 grand. But with record inflation hanging over the nation, some economists have said it could make things worse. But the White House simply said the president is fulfilling a campaign promise. It's a very targeted plan that's going to give relief to 90% of Americans that are making uh, less than $75,000 a year. That is important. This is a campaign promise uh, that the president made and kept, and he went beyond not just the 10000 but up to 20000 20, On the other hand, this one right here, Republicans and even some Democrats still crying foul, claiming the plan is too expensive and frankly isn't fair to the millions who paid their dues. First off, it's inherently unfair, right? It's arbitrarily picking a group of, of individuals and we're going to arbitrarily just cancel their debt uh, with the stroke of a pen, which, again, not even going through Congress. That's uh, fairly illegal. It adds bill hundreds of billions of dollars at a time when we're trying to bring inflation under control. That's what he thinks, but what do voters think? As you'd expect, it's a mixed bag. Watch. I think it's a pretty good idea that... Students are able to get their loans forgiven. Take out a loan, you go to school, you pay it off, just like everybody else did. I don't think it's enough, right? I think it needs to be more than that. You make the decision to take out student loans to go to school, you know the possible ramifications of that if you can't pay them, and I feel like you should be responsible for your actions. Well, that ran the gamut. There's also the accusation the White House is essentially trying to buy votes. But is this whole thing fair, especially with the ballooning cost estimates? Let's get into it with tonight's party panel. Attorney and Republican strategist Alexandra Wilkes, Based Politics co-founder and Foundation for Economic Education content manager Hannah Cox, and the host of the Jason Rant Show. It is Jason Rants. Okay, let's go to Hannah. Uh, well, what do you think? You just saw the, the reaction. Obviously, it runs the gamut, but it probably uh, it depends on whether you owe money or not, right? I mean, maybe I owe some money and I'm still opposed to this because I understand what makes things expensive. And the root problem with this whole solution that they're throwing out is it does nothing to actually address why college has become so incredibly expensive over the past couple of years. It does nothing to ensure that universities actually have to start competing, have to actually start offering degrees that have real value out in the market. And so this is something that not only is going to cause worse inflation to hurt our economy, it's not only really unfair to people who did not take out these loans or who already paid back their loans, but it's also something that's going to continue to allow these universities to increase their prices far above what the market could actually support. It's going to make college increasingly more expensive for everybody that comes behind us, and it's not going to ensure that more people have a greater chance at higher prosperity in life. So it's very economically stupid and backwards, and everybody should be opposed to it. Well, I mean, that makes sense, Hannah. Uh, Alexandra, do you agree? I mean, is this just going to drive up the cost? Obviously, that that's what's been driving up education costs anyway, is that there's plenty of money being handed out to students, and it's not so hard to get. So this is just going to make it worse. Is that right? Absolutely. We've seen that government intervention after government intervention over the last couple of decades has just added to the bottom line. Um, colleges right now are building in that extra $10,000 into the cost. Um, that's what they do. And as Hannah mentioned, it just makes it more expensive for everybody. I think that the only people <clears throat> who think that this is a good idea are people who are Democrats who are living in the Democratic D.C. Bubble, bubble. They don't understand what this means for people who did not make these economic decisions. Um, and I think that what Biden administration is counting on is they're thinking that this is going to shore up a, a, a base of young voters that he desperately needs in the midterm elections. Um, and that it gives, because it's not quite legal and it's not quite paid for or people don't really understand what the cost of it is, uh, it gives some vulnerable Democrats a little bit of cover to say, we're not sure, we'll have to see. Um, so I think that they think it's the best of both worlds. But I think if you're that working class base that has become so important to the Republican Party and has turned sharply against Democrats in the last couple of years, it's going to be a rude awakening in November. Yeah, obviously, he did it to buy votes. I think that everyone knows he wants votes. But is he going to get them, Jason? I mean, the people, uh, you know, recent graduates, maybe uh, grad students, people with all this debt, they were probably Democratic voters anyway. So he's going to is he going to gain any votes from this? 
I think ultimately he's going to lose votes. I think you're right. The people who ultimately were always going to vote for him anyway might feel slightly more energized. But the message that they're telling that electrician in Topeka or the contractor in Spokane is that you who chose either not to go to college or to go to a college you can actually afford, or even worse, you paid off your student loans, you are now going to have to subsidize the decision for someone to get a gender studies degree or worse, a philosophy degree from Oberlin or getting some like Hampshire uh, major. This is patently unfair. And I can't think of a worse message going into the midterms when everyone is already thinking about inflation. We're already thinking about, hey, those 87,000 IRS agents you're about to hire. What are they going to do? I think we just found out exactly what they're going to do. And it just seems like you're going to lose more in some of the areas where, frankly, you can't in these swing districts. You're going to lose folks because of this. Hannah, when you mentioned this isn't going to be the thing that is able to get college costs under control, you sounded like you have an idea. Well, I mean, what should they do if they want to control costs? Not that they do, but what should they do? Well, instead of ending student debt, we need to end government-backed student loans. If a degree is actually worth pursuing has real value in the market, you will be able to get loans from a private institution or good grief from one of these universities with their tremendously large endowments. We need to quit backing up loans that nobody in their right mind would get out in the free market because they're not worth anything in the real world. Instead, we need to make schools actually have to compete, actually offer a product that's worth what they're selling it for. And if they can't, then they deserve to lose money. They deserve to close. We need to actually have a free market system. Ed, we're nowhere close to that right now. And I think that it's really unfair that these basically these institutions are getting corporate welfare from all of us, even though they continue to push an anti-American agenda most of the time. And even though they, again, continue to offer a lower return on investment for most of their degrees. So this is an endless, vicious cycle that needs to be stopped by the government getting itself out of this business in the first place. OK, Hannah, you had me at good grief. Uh, the panel will return <laughs> later. OK, let's forget the cop.